Hello and welcome back to PSN News. I'm Carly Knowlton. This evening I get the incredible opportunity to interview Katie Feeney, a sophomore at Penn State who is a huge Tin Talk sensation. She has gained over 7 million followers from numerous dance, comedy, DIY, and unboxing videos. Katie, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I really appreciate it. Of course, thank you for having me. I'm excited. You have you are the biggest Penn State Penn Stater on TikTok, over seven million followers. How does this make you feel? <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, I never. It's it's hard for me to even see myself in that way because I've just been do, doing this for so long, and I feel like every other student. But it's weird to think that like people look at me differently. <laughs> so it's been an experience for sure. Yeah, that makes sense. I understand that. What is the first video that you posted that went worldwide, would you say? Oh, gosh. I mean, I started on Musical.ly, so <laughs> <laughs> that was a while ago. I did this one dance with my school's dance team to the song Music Makes You Lose Control by Missy Elliott, which blew up, and that was in high school, but I don't even remember what my first video on Musical.ly was, and I don't think I want to even <laughs> have to go back. I think it was a dance video, but um, yeah, those videos were interesting. So, sure. growing up in Maryland, what made you choose to come to Penn State out of all the other schools you could choose? Yeah, I mean, I was pretty much set up to go to Maryland. That's That was my plan. I didn't even really apply to many other schools, but Penn State was always, like, a school I wanted to go to. It was just more realistic that I would go to Maryland, and because of my success on social media, I was able to pay fully for Penn State, and that ultimately was why I came wow. here. Okay, well, that makes sense. That's awesome. Thank you. And I know that you just got this um, social media job with the Washington Commanders. Can you tell us a little bit about how that looks? Yeah, so uh, over the summer, I went to a lot of the training camps and some practices. I went to the draft party. Um, and then I've been going to some of their games. I went to the home opener. I was at the game this past Sunday um, against the Titans. But I basically film a lot of behind the scenes stuff, a lot of atmosphere. I've gotten to interview players like Carson Wentz, our very own Jahan Dotson, which was um, pretty crazy. I was there the night that he got drafted and got to talk to him on the phone. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, just a lot of behind the scenes. And then I'm on the sidelines of the games filming. Yeah, that's um, incredible. Seriously incredible. Did you ever see yourself like a few years ago? Like, all right, I'm getting big. I got 100,000 followers. Oh my goodness, I hit a million. Like, what do you think the future's going to look like for you? I'm excited to find out. Hopefully more in sports. Um, I also want to incorporate more lifestyle stuff. But I mean, it all happened very quickly. Like working for an NFL team is in my 10-year plan, not my 19-year-old plan. I mean, now I'm 20, but... Um, yeah, it's it's been very surreal. I'm very blessed to have been able to do all of this at such a young age. If you could pick any any famous person to be in a TikTok with you, do you know who you would want to film a TikTok with? Um, in the sports world, Erin Andrews would be so cool. She's a huge role model for me as a woman in sports. And then Emma Chamberlain, also a huge role model of mine. I think she's absolutely hilarious. Um, and she's been able to accomplish so much at 21. So just to ha like sit down and have a conversation with her would be a dream of mine. Yeah, Emma's really cool. Like she started painting shoes, I think. Yeah, she's always And then always now she has things. her dream house. No, oh, that's yeah. incredible. Oh, I'm obsessed. That's incredible. <laughs> so do you, I know you're in school. You're a sophomore at Penn State. Is it hard to, you have all this stuff coming at you on top of your schoolwork. How do you manage all this? And is it stressful ever? Um, yeah, it definitely is a lot, but I enjoy being busy. I just wake up early. I try to get a workout in first thing in the morning, get back at any filming I have to get done. I don't have in-person classes Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, which is how like I just scheduled web classes those days, and then in-person Tuesday, Thursday, so I can film my brand deals on those days and then just grind out schoolwork Tuesdays and Thursdays and then throughout the week as well. But I mean, I have a to-do list. I just try to keep myself organized, and that's how I've been able to do it. But, I mean, the second I don't have something to do, I'm like, this feels a little strange. No, I get that. I feel the same way. Like, I'm in so many clubs at Penn State, and I'm like, I have an hour free. Something's missing here. But, exactly. Um, so, yeah, so what do you think your future will look like in the next five to ten years? What do you see? Oh, boy, I don't know. I'm hoping this year to go to the Super Bowl again and maybe go to more MLB games, wow. um, continue working in sports. And, yeah, I don't really know what the future holds. And I guess that's <laughs> the exciting part is I'm always just, like, finding out new things. I'm going to continue to to work on growing my platforms and just diversifying myself across all, which has been, like, my goal recently is to really focus on YouTube and Snapchat instead of just TikTok because that, I mean, that was what I started on. Mm -hmm. But 
I mean, TikTok is unpredictable, and you never know, like, if it will go away. It almost did True. a few times, True. so. <laughs> yeah, and it's good that, like, you're diversifying yourself on all different platforms and not just sticking to one. Cause, I mean, you're right, you never know, and you never know what the future's going to hold. Yeah. So that's good to, like, keep an open mind with everything. Yeah, and it's fun, too. Like, I've definitely gotten more comfortable just speaking to the camera and interacting, like, with my audience, which I do a lot on Snapchat. And it's mm -hmm. been cool to, like, see. I used to have a very young fan base, um, and now it's, like, now I have a lot of college students watching me and, like, <laughs> older um, kids and, like, young adults, which has been cool because I've, I guess, like, expanded my myself um, to more people well that's good that's really good so when you have your younger audience do you almost feel like you need to act a certain way when you're on social media or are you just that's just your regular personality um I definitely keep like my content very clean um not even just for the younger um audience I have just because for brands I mean that's mm -hmm. like that's how I started and that's how I will continue to to keep my my videos and I mean I feel like even though it's taken me maybe a little bit longer to grow because of the type of clean content I post, um, I'm happy that I didn't like take any shortcuts in posting some content that people do. And if like, I don't know, I don't feel like I don't need to <laughs> get too specific. I feel like mm -hmm. <laughs> some, some people, um, girls and guys grow very quickly <laughs> because of the content they post. Oh, you're so right about <laughs> that. So just keep it clean and age friendly for everyone. Yeah. It's always the best way to go. Are there any videos that you regret posting, do you think? Or you love um, them all? I don't regret any videos no. I've posted. I mean, some videos I'll look back and I'm like, oh gosh, like, why did I post that? Like, some of my younger videos, just like the <gasps> Musical.ly videos. I mean, I think anyone looking back at videos they posted on Musical.ly or even early TikTok are just like, ugh. But I mean, I don't regret anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> I get that. It's I'm gotten me to, to where um, I am now, so even though some of them are a little bit um, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, with your 7 million followers on TikTok, um, like, where do you see yourself in the next few weeks here? Do you think you'll start hanging out with Brad more and, like, doing some <laughs> videos with him? Um, I've known Brad for, for a long time because I did a lot with Jerpa. Okay. Um, so I met him through that. It's been really cool to see him grow. Um, I've al I always knew that it, at some point he would start to blow Aww. up, and I'm, I'm really happy for him. He deserves it. And, I mean, who, who he is on social media is literally who he is. Like, he is all about just inspiring people and, like, motivation so it's yeah. been really cool to see um him grow oh that's awesome so um i know that you just posted a video about women in sports and it blew up and i know that you have it pinned right now on tiktok <laughs> and everything yeah. so in the future where do you see women in sports and do you see yourself in the future with sports as well hopefully? yeah i mean i i just can i i <laughs> sorry um I just see more women working in sports and if I can be someone to inspire younger girls to to get into it I got a lot of positive feedback on that video of just girls saying like now that I see that another woman can do it or a young girl can do it like I want to get into it too I mean at the Super Bowl at the MLB all-star game I was one of like the only um I was one of the only females there and there was not a lot of young people there either so it was it was kind of intimidating definitely yeah. like interviewing these these big players and being 19 I was like hey um, can I ask you a question but I bet. yeah yeah it's been um cool to see see how it's changed in the sports world so with all of that what do you think your biggest accomplishment is so far Definitely working for the Washington Commanders and being the first ever social media correspondent for the NFL that was very crazy and it's still surreal that I'm in this position and I've gotten to to meet so many people and um yeah again like that was something I would have hoped to do in 10 years not yeah. right now so it's I'm very very blessed for just everything that social media has given to me and I wouldn't trade it for anything it's huge it's a major accomplishment you have come so far thank Seriously, you it's something really happy to be proud of yourself for I know I post TikToks, I get 100 views. I'm like, yes! <laughs> so you have come so far and just, it's awesome. Thank you so much for coming with us tonight. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. It's been very awesome to talk with you. Thank you. So next up, Hannah and Paloma will bring us the latest news from across the nation. We'll be right back.